Today we are looking at nano sand or magic sand as it's called in the, in the toy industry. We're diving deep into the science of why it behaves the way it does. Let's go! Have you ever wondered why magic sand can't get wet? Well, today we are going to dive into the science of why it acts the way it does. This is really cool and it looks like magic, which is why it's called magic sand, because you take it out of the water, it's perfectly dry. You can get it wet and you can even mold it underwater into sand castles and it won't just spread around like normal sand and then you just can't pick it up. This is amazing! Oh, cool. But first, this is Destructive Creativity. If you enjoy this channel, make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon that keeps you up to date for all of our new videos. We have new stuff coming out every single Wednesday. All right, let's get into this. So first off, let's show you what happens when we pour normal sand beside the hydrophobic magic sand. Look at that. It kind of goes poof all over the place. And if I were to scoop it up, it's, it's wet, gross sand. Kind of lumps together. And that's because sand, as it exists normally on beaches all over the world, is hydrophilic. It really loves water and it clubs together and the surface tension of the water will coat the entire particle of the sand. Not so with magic sand. Magic sand is hydrophobic. It is afraid of water. So obviously there is a fundamental difference between these two substances. What could that be? Now, this goes back to polar and nonpolar molecules. And we did this before in a couple other episodes, but we'll just show you the basics again. Water is a polar molecule, and oil is a nonpolar molecule, and so they won't mix. We're just going to show you that right now. We have a bit of water, and we're going to pour in a bit of oil. No matter how much we mix this, they will always separate. And, oh, this is a great opportunity. I just got a test tube stirring machine for my laboratory <laughs> equipment. So I'm going to test it out to see if we can mix polar and nonpolar molecules. This is a vortex stirring machine. It pretty much just mixes up everything. Look, that's about as mixed up as it possibly can get, right? Well, on the molecular level, they are still very different substances. So we'll just let this settle and the oil and the water will separate out perfectly. And you can even see that happening right now. Isn't that cool? Both of these substances t start out as the same thing. So why are they so different? Well, it looks as if this sand is mixing with the water, so we would have the same polarity as the water, so no polar, and this sand isn't. But that's not right, because it's not dissolving with the water. The secret ingredient is trimethylsilanol. I think I'm saying that right. So this sand starts out as normal beach sand, or sand dust, and it gets coated with a vapor treatment of trimethylsilanol. Trimethylsilanol is nonpolar molecule. Just like oil, it can't mix with water. So that means that the sand itself, because it is so finely coated, is completely hydrophobic, which means that it's not going to want to get wet. Whereas the other sand, because it is not coated with anything special, the surface tension of the water will coat every single grain of sand and make it hydrophilic. It loves water. This is so cool. So why was this created? Because typically science doesn't really care very much about toys. As cool as this is, typically the toys follow the scientific innovation. So why was this made? It was originally called nano sand and it was created to help clean up oil spills. Exactly right. Because remember, oil and water don't mix very well because of the polar and nonpolar molecules. But because magic sand, or nano sand, is coated with nonpolar molecule, it will mix very well with oil. And as it mixes with oil, it will eventually cause the oil to sink. So instead of creating a giant oil slick spreading over the top of the ocean, it will actually sink down and can be collected just with the sand, the nano sand, that was spread. It's really cool, and it could save a lot of environmental disasters. So why isn't nano sand being used to clean up the oil spills today? 
Well, it's still in its experimental stages because it is very, very expensive. For something like this, it's actually not super expensive. I think this was like $15. But if you consider the size of an oil spill, that would be billions of dollars. And science does not like expensive things. That's actually not <laughs> true at all. Science loves expensive things, but only like short term. We don't want to continually spend infinite amounts of money, if that makes sense. Okay, so we'll pour the water in. We're demonstrating how to clean up an oil spill right now. So here, here we go. There's our ocean. And our ocean has a tugboat on it, carrying billions of pounds of liters of oil. So billions of gallons of oil spill into our ocean. Oh no! <laughs> Look at those billions of pounds. How do we clean it up? Oh no, good thing we have magic sand. Magic sand is hydrophobic, so it won't mix with the water, but it will mix with the oil very well. So look, now instead, now as the sand sinks, it brings the oil down with it. So we'll just keep going like this until the sand is all at the bottom. Now the magic sand, the nano sand, has mixed with the oil. Is the oil stuck in with the hydrophobic sand? And it is cool. in the sand, no longer in the, in the water, which means then they can just come in, scoop up all the sand, and the oil is trapped inside. Get rid of the sand, and then your, oil, your ocean is clean. Yay! We discussed the Marangoni effect a little while ago, and in the Marangoni effect, we discussed the properties of soap. Now, typically, molecules are either polar or nonpolar, but soap is a special exception. It has properties of both, which is why soap can wash off oil off of your hands. So I'm just going to pour in some soap, and the soap is going to break down the nonpolar molecules in the hydrophobic coating on this magic sand, and it will be able to mix. Look at that. It just mixes with the water. So I'll pour this in and then mix it up, and then that will remove. So as we mix, the, the sand is getting more and more covered with water and getting more and more wet. Look at that! There we go, see that? The soap has completely broken down the hydrophobic coating. Because, the same reason why soap washes oil off your hand, because it's bonding the polar to the non-polar molecules. <laughs> Look at that! I've completely ruined my magic sand. That's okay, I got lots. Ew. <laughs> Another toy that I just got is a digital microscope, which is a 1200 times magnification. So let's take a look at the hydrophobic properties of these two different types of sand in a very high magnification environment. And if it doesn't work at all, oh well, that still means I get to play with toys and learn something. Let's put some water onto the hydrophobic sand and it just balls up like that. Let's try and push some of the sand into the water bubble. Yeah, that doesn't work at all. Okay, so you can see as we sprinkle some sand down onto the water bubble, it automatically gets sucked in because of the surface tension of the water. The final experiment I want to try with magic sand is mixing it with oil to show you how it reacts when just poured into a pool of nonpolar molecules. So let's just pour in some olive oil into a petri dish. All right, so we have this petri dish full of oil. And now we're going to pour in some of this hydrophobic sand. Now, hydrophobic, it's afraid of water, not oil. It's actually attracted to oil. So if I know this correctly, it's going to just act. Okay, so now we're going to stir this around a little bit. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. This is acting almost exactly like sand would act in water because the molecules are attracted to each other. That is so cool! <laughs> Bloop! This is Destructive Creativity. If you enjoy this and you enjoy science or 
just having fun with us, make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon. It really helps us out. Until next time, I'm Jonathan Allers. And I'm Eliana. See you next time. Bye!